In this video, let us discuss GPAT 2018 questions from pharmaceutical analysis. First question. In universal indicators, a pH of 7 is shown with options are A. Yellow color, B. Green color, C. Blue color and D. Pink color. So the right answer is green color. So let us divide the pH scale from 0 to 14 like with two divisions 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, 8 to 10, 10 to 12 and 12 to 14. And the corresponding colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple and violet. You can simply remember this from the right side like the VIPGR where the indigo is replaced here with the purple. Now VIPGR is having the pH values from pH 14 to 0. Now the, the pH 7 is in between the 6 to 8 so it corresponds to the green color. So green color is the right answer for this question. Let us go to the next question. What quantity of an indicator solution shall be added when quantity is not mentioned in an assay or test? Options are A. 0.1 ml, B. 0.05 ml and C. 0.2 ml and D. 0.5 ml. So when the quantity is not specified, we have to add 0.1 ml of the indicator. So actually, each drop is having 0.05 ml approximately. So two drops means 2 into 0.05 ml that is 0.1 ml. So whenever a quantity is not specified, we have to add two drops of the indicator that is 0.1 ml. Let us go to the next question. In Zeldal method, sample containing nitrogen is digested with options are concentrated sodium hydroxide, fuming nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid and strong ammonia solution. So the right answer is concentrated sulfuric acid. So what is Zeldal method? In the Zeldal method, the sample containing the nitrogen is going to be digested with the concentrated H2SO4 and in presence of a catalyst it is going to produce NH4 plus ions. These NH4 plus ions are then treated with NaOH and they are distilled so ammonia is going to be released. This ammonia is then going to be collected in an acid like either boric acid, sulfuric acid or HCl. So in this way, Zeldal method uses concentrated H2SO4 as the digesting medium. Now in this Zeldal method, a catalyst is going to be used like copper or serenium. But the digesting agent is the concentrated H2SO4, which is the answer for the given question. So let us see the next question. What is the concentration of paracetamol in a 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution whose absorption in a 1 cm cell at its lambda max 257 nanometer was found to be 0.825. The A1% 1 cm in the IP monograph of the paracetamol is given as 715 at 257 nanometer. So options given here are A. 1.1 gram per 100 ml B. 0.0011 mg per 100 ml and C 0.0011 gram per 100 ml and D 0.0011 microgram per 100 ml. So only the units and the digits are uh, differing but it is ending with always 11. So here the right answer is C 0.0011 gram per 100 ml. So let us see first of all what is the data given in the problem. Absorbance A is given as 0.825. And path length B is given as 1 cm and absorptivity A1% 1, 1 cm is 715 and concentration is unknown. So what is the concentration that was asked in the question? So which equation we have to use? A is equal to A1% 1, 1 cm BC. 
where A is equal to 0.825 and B is 1 centimeter and A1 plus 1 cm is the 750. So applying this in the equation 0.825 is equal to 715 into 1 into C. Otherwise C is equal to 0.825 by 75 which is nothing but 10th to the power of minus 3 into 825 by 715. So which is nothing but you can see that 825 can be can be written as 11 into 75 and 715 as 11 into 65. So it is nothing but 10 to the power of minus 3 into 15 by 13. So this is 10 to the power of minus 3 into 1.1. Otherwise 0 0.0011 gram per 100 ml. Right? Because the, it is a, a 1% 1 cm 1 is given. The concentration is also expressed as gram per 100 ml. So that is the answer for this question. Let us go to the next question. The unit for the specific absorbency A 1% 1, 1 cm is A microgram per ml B mg per liter and C liter mole inverse centimeter inverse and D deciliter gram inverse centimeter inverse. So the right answer is deciliter gram inverse centimeter inverse. So let us see the again the equation A is equal to A 1% 1, 1 cm BC. What are the units for absorbance? Absorbance is having no units because it is a ratio. And B, B is the path length which is having the centimeter as the unit. And C, because the concentration is expressed in the percentage, so the C is having the gram per 100 ml. So what are the units for the A 1% 1, 1 cm? So now, no units is equal to x into cm into gram per 100 ml when we take only the units in the equation. Now x is equal to 100 ml pi gram into centimeter otherwise 100 ml into gram inverse into centimeter inverse and we know that 100 ml is equal to 1 deciliter. So now this can also be written as deciliter gram inverse centimeter inverse which is the unit for the absorptivity that is a 1% 1, 1 cm. Now let us see another question. What is the nuclear magnetic resonance frequency of 1 H in a 7.05 Tesla magnetic field of magnetic field strength? Options are a 300 mega H, b 200 mega H and c 60 mega H and d 100 mega H. So the right answer here is 300 mega H. So which equation again we have to use? The Larmor frequency nu is equal to gamma B naught by 2 pi. Here the B naught magnetic field strength is given as 7.05 Tesla and gamma is a constant which is 26.75 into 10 power of minus 7 radians per Tesla into second. And pi is already we know 3.14 radians that is 22 by 7 that is nothing but 3.14. Now applying this equation nu is equal to 7.05 into 26.75 into 10 power minus 7 by 2 into 3.14. Solving this we will get 300 mega H as the answer. Now let us see the next question. What is the hydrogen deficiency index value of value for toning? Options are A, 1, B, 2, C, 3 and D, 4. The right answer is option D, 4. So what is hydrogen deficiency index? It simply indicates the degree of unsaturation. So let us take an aliphatic as well as aromatic compound. For example, this is the C6H14 that is the hexane, N-hexane. And now this is the benzene which is the C6H6. Both are having the 6 carbons but one is saturated and there is unsaturated. Now the difference in the number of hydrogens is 8. And loss of hydrogens with each double bond. So whenever each double bond is formed, 2 hydrogens are lost. So totally 8 number of hydrogens are not there in the cyclic structure. For every double bond, two hydrogens are lost. So the hydrogen deficiency index is equal to 8 by 2. That is nothing but 4. So 4 is the hydrogen deficiency index of the benzene. 
Now let us take the case of the toline. So toline is compared with the n-heptane. n-heptane is having the C7H16 and toline is having the C7H8. So the deficiency in the number of hydrogens is again 8 and loss of hydrogens with each double bond is again 2. So the hydrogen deficiency index is equal to 8 by 2 that is equal to 4. So again the toline is having the same hydrogen deficiency index that is 4. So 4 is the answer for this question. Next question. In NMR the aromatic proton resonate in a characteristic narrow range at A 6.5 to 8.0 B 11.0 to 12.0 and C 2.0 to 4.0 and D 0.7 to the 1.3. So here the right answer is 6.5 to the 8.0. NMR spectra can be divided into the different regions with the chemical shift. So in the chemical shift with 0 to 1.5, this indicates the alkyl protons. And the reason 1.5 to the 2.5 indicates the alpha keto protons and alpha and allylic protons and 2.5 to 4.5 reason indicates the protons attached to the alcoholic carbon so alcohols amines and halides and next reason is a 4.5 to 6.5 this reason is given by the vinylic protons and then 6.5 to 8.0 that is given by the aromatic protons and then 9 to 12 is shown by aldehydic protons and acidic protons. In this way, the chemical shift can be divided into 0 to 12 where the different types of protons will fall in the different chemical shift regions. So, aromatic protons will show a peak at 6.5 to 8.0 in the proton NMR. The difficulties of long elution time and poor resolution of complex mixtures are observed in elution analysis. These difficulties can be overcome by modification of elution analysis known as A. Isocratic elution analysis B. Gradient elution analysis C. Displacement analysis and D. Frontal analysis. So here the right answer is gradient elution analysis. Suppose we have a mixture of compounds A and B and suppose that A is more polar than B. Now if we want to separate this mixture and we are going to use a mobile phase which is highly polar then what happens? Both A and B will elute out of the column because we are going to use a highly polar mobile phase. So here we will have poor resolution that is a separation of the components a and B. Now let us take another case. We are going to take the same mixture A plus B. Now here we are going to use the weakly polar mobile phase. When a weakly polar mobile phase is used, B is going to be eluted but A requires more mobile phase for complete elution. Now in this case we will observe long elution time. So when we have the mixture of polar components if we use a highly polar mobile phase and weakly polar mobile phase, we will have the two problems like poor resolution and long elution time. In order to eliminate these two problems, we can change the mobile phase composition after a specific interval. So this type of elution what we call gradient elution. So for this question, the gradient elution analysis can overcome the two problems like long elution time and poor resolution.